Hi, in this video we will look into data driven way of PID control. As we are moving on to learn more about the data driven PID control, uh, since it is data driven it is going to be compute heavy at the same time uh, this will also be giving benefits of the PID control which has simplicity. The control methodology that we are selecting here is PID always because of the simple control structure, because of it has some meaning of the control parameters. At the same time operators can be trained easily for the tuning and that is the main reason we have been selecting PID control throughout our uh, practical control methods in this uh, in these lecture series. For the data driven PID case we would like to consider PID controller design for highly nonlinear systems. Now one is uh, we can use we are using it for highly nonlinear system what we studied so far into uh, the its origin of the PID control was mainly on the linear systems LTI systems and so on and so forth. At the same time we tried simplifying it with the for first order system, second order system considering the dominant pole analysis and so on. And at the same time we it, since it is PID control has its, its own uh, benefits people have applied it in highly nonlinear cases as well. Now when it comes to the highly nonlinear case one is one can derive its model. Uh, it is a nonlinear model fair enough even though when we consider it is a highly nonlinear uh, model uh, there is a chance that we have missed out some, some particular variable and what not. So in that case the modeling or, or the that particular variable relationship is not known. In that case getting the model for that particular nonlinear system is complex one is complex and perhaps not available. So in that case we resort to the learning methods but at the same time um, what, what is available for such systems is if I am applying this input this output is available corresponding to this input this particular output is available. So this input output data for this input and this output this input output association is available to me or correspondence is available to me. But when I am learning through this particular data sequence of data that is like for particular series of data some sequence of inputs this is what the sequence of outputs I am getting at the same time it is not correct input output relationship we are talking about dynamical systems. So there comes the way out for designing the controller with the help of the learning methods at the same time these data is going to be very heavily available I mean the amount of data requirement is going to be very heavy and the compute on the uh, compute requirement for working with this data is going to be heavy. So the concern is always going to be the learning cost how quickly I am able to do it and, and how quickly and how accurately I am able to do it. The structure of the PID is going to remain as PID control because we can implement this PID control very easily. Now comes the concept now let us try looking into concept on how I am going to design the PID tuning rule for, um, for the highly nonlinear cases nonlinear system cases. So what we have we already have here is the historical data as I mentioned uh, sequence of input input sequences available and corresponding output sequences available at the same time input 1 is correspond is giving you output 1 input 2 is giving you output 2 and so on and so forth. Now this is just not input which is the control input given and the output because this if because the system is dynamical the sequence of input is affecting the output and that is where we will have to redefine what is input to this data. What, what is this input data we are talking about and what is the output data that we are talking about. But as a concept the memory or the database will have its input and output mind it we are not talking about system input and system output here. It is the database input and the database output and that needs to be that is basically creating the database for us. 
Now, we cannot keep all the cases possible. So, that is the reason there is going to be some data or similar data. So, we will have to define what is the similarity that we are talking about. And based on that, we will be giving the, uh, we'll be the, giving the uh, input to the local controller, which is our PID, means we will be giving the proportional gain, uh, integral gain and the derivative gain. So, somewhere we are talking about we have, we will be giving que query to the database. This query will say, okay, I, my query is near to these two data entries, these two data entries and this particular data entries are like bunch of data which is similar data and this is from the similar data we are assessing what should be the PID tuning rule, PID tunes and that is given as an output. And for this particular nonlinear system, the query and the, the output of the uh, database, which we, we want to use it for the, the uh, uh, PID control tune the gains, um, that is going to be highly nonlinear, correct. So now what we have to look into is um, understanding these concepts, um, how this is one way of doing it from many different ways, some of the ways that we will we'll cover it in the next slide, next lectures. So this one way, in this one way what we consider here is that this data that is the information phi t minus 1 which is available for previous time instant and this particular query you, you can see that this has timestamp, right. So this query is timestamped because my, because I am dealing with dynamical systems. Now, dynamical systems because these are governed by differential equations or uh, the discrete time equations and so on. Of course, we will have to work with discrete time equations here because we the, this is the digital world that we are talking about now. So, the database is queried by this information vector at t minus 1. It as, as we said, we will have the similar neighbors identified. And then that gives the local controller parameters corresponding to the query at t minus 1. All right, so let us look into how we are going to form the information vector and the output vectors. So let us consider our normal way of looking at the nonlinear system input u of t and output y of t. So this y of t is say some function of this information vector. Of course, this information vector we will have to figure out how we are defining it. If I consider this y of t as a discrete time equation because this is what is the relationship that the system uh, model gives us, of course that model is unknown to me. So then information, then this right hand side turns out to be some linear combination of y of t minus 1, t minus n y means n y previous from I am calculating the time output output um, of the system at time t, then I am considering n y such samples, previous samples of y in this particular y sequence y of t minus 1 to y of t minus n y. Similarly, it will have the n u previous input samples. So, this sequence u of t minus 1 to u of t minus n u is being considered. So, this information vector at t minus 1 considers n y previous samples of output and n u previous input samples, all right. This we are considering it as a variable in this particular case, but for a particular uh, system this n y and n u is going to be constant. Okay. Now, when I have, I design a controller using PID, my, I consider the error input E of t equals y of t minus r of t. Now, this PID, this particular, in this particular uh, lecture, we all, we are considering the controller is PID. So, U of t is of this form, which is Kp proportional gain times E of t, integral gain with an accumulator derivative gain with delta e of t. Now, this delta is a difference operator which is given by in the z domain is given by 1 minus z inverse frequency domain. 
ok. So, when we apply this difference operation on various on both these sides then I can consider this delta 1 minus z inverse if I consider this as the u of t minus u of t minus 1 then I can write in terms of k i e of t because my accumulator is going to be uh, given by. So, this delta u of t is actually u of t minus u of t minus 1 and this term is coming by when I consider u of t it is k i summation e of t minus and when I consider u of t minus 1 it gives k i summation e from t minus 1. So, this is the previous sample we consider. So, basically t equal to 0 to be uh, sorry e of k I, I should have considered. So, k from 0 to t this will be if I am considering e of k here then these samples are k i summation e of k 0 k equal to 0 to t minus 1. That is the reason when I take subtraction I am only going to get left with k i e power of t e of t here. k p delta y t because now my term here this u of t minus u of t minus 1 is nothing but e of t minus e of t minus 1. So, my considering that I have already reached this steady state e of t minus e of t minus 1 is r of y of t minus r of t minus y of t minus 1 minus r of t minus 1. Now, considering that I have already reached the steady state r of t and r of t minus 1 is equal that is why I am left with y of t minus y of t minus 1 which is delta y of t which is this term. I can do something similar for the derivative part here. Now, this uh, we cannot fix k p k i and k d here because the system is nonlinear. If it is linear then we would be able to do it, but since uh, the system response is system itself system behavior is nonlinear. I will not be able to consider uh, fixing it. My operating point could be something else somewhere even if I am changing the operating point by small small, small point Le even I linearize it linearized solution will is going to give me different transfer functions and so on. Um, that is the reason I will have to consider time varying PID gains and this particular vector big kt bold kt is now k p of t, k i of t and k d of t. And then we are going to consider u of t as some function of this phi prime, this is another information vector output vector that we are considering here rather. So, this phi prime of t is the k vector, the input at time t, output at time t to t minus 2 because I am getting this delta u of t with the help of two previous output variants and the previous u of t minus 1 that is being used in uh, e of t minus 1. So, basically I will be able to use uh, this particular equation to calculate u of t which is equal to u of t minus 1 plus all this k i e of t and so on k p term and then k d term. All right. So, in order to calculate this u of t what is needed is the proportional gain k of t u of t minus 1 and 3 samples of uh, output variants and output variable in r of t to calculate this e of t. All right. Okay. Now, similar so what can what I can write now is y of t plus 1 which is the out the the system response at t plus 1 is some function of phi tilde. Now, this phi tilde is y of t to n, n y previous samples 
plus the, cur the current T is fable. The proportional uh, integral and derivative gains k of t, the current command r of t and previous nu samples of input. So, this particular output now typically for a nonlinear function and PID control way, we will consider these this n y to be greater than or equal to 3 and n u to be greater than or equal to 2. I can always consider increasing this particular inf information vector dimension, but 3 or close to 3 should be good enough, but more than it should be more than 3 at least. So, now I will start by saying that when I have when the output response y of t is to be calculated, it is dependent on the this phi tilde this information vector phi tilde t which is a sum function of it. I do not know that particular h mapping here, h function or h map here. Now phi tilde as we said is going to be some previous samples of y r of t and u of t to u t minus 1 because I will be able to calculate this particular the, the gain vectors as a function of phi bar. Now what is this phi bar? this is phi bar is again can be calculated is nothing but um, the um, information vector comprising of n y samples of previous samples of y, the previous k of t, t minus 1, the previous value of the proportional gain r of t and um, the previous u samples. Since future sample is not available to me, Right? when I have to calculate this particular this, these entries to be done into the database, um, this particular sample value is not known. And how will I calculate the gain k of t that requires y of t plus 1 now. Okay. Uh, so, what we did in this case, let us look into it once more that the system output at t plus 1 is a function of some information vector which is a function of k of t as well. So, k of t in order to calculate k of t which is my proportional gain. So, so basically you have this particular phi tilde right. Now, this phi tilde depends upon uh, your uh, output response y of t plus 1 depends upon certain values of this. But these values we are trying to control with the help of PID control. So, that is the reason we wrote this particular PID gain vector in terms of these this new vector which is comprising of the future vector, future value of the output and the previous values of this. Alright, but that is what the system response is going to be. But uh, this particular y t plus 1 is not available to me. When I am looking into giving a particular PID gain values, I do not know what the output is going to be. But since I am looking forward that the PID gain that I am, I am designing is going to create give the steady state output, steady state output. So, I can consider that the output y of t plus 1 is equal to r of t plus 1, which is to certain extent since it is a reference signal is available and that I can feed it into the database entry now. All right. So, now my job here is to consider getting uh, generate these initial database. Then once the initial database is ready, right? What we can do is we can calculate, we can query the database. Now, when I am querying the database, it is not necessary that this particular information, uh, that particular query and that information vector matches. So, since I have a database, I have multiple queries into multiple information vectors being kept here. Now, when I am querying it, it is not necessary that it will match with this particular query information vector. This particular query is somewhere sitting close to this particular information vector, but not with others. So, then I will choose the cell select certain neighbors of this particular 
query that I had. Now this query is close to a particular set of neighbors and first is how many neighbors to consider, how do I calculate this distance? this needs to be defined and for various different ways you can define the distance, various different ways you can select the neighbors based on which your method is going to be different and what tune, what tuning rule you want to, what way you want to tune the PID will evolve there. Once this particular, we have selected the near neighbors, now we need to be with the help of these individual neighbor information vectors are giving me a set of PIDs, right? PID values. So this will be say KP1, KI1, KD1. Say this particular information says KP2, KP, KI2 and KD2. So this vector and this vector and that too, this particular one is just not the, P, the PIDs, right? It could be the output vector could be different. So one needs to match the output vector and then say that okay I have so many values which are near to me then I, how do I calculate my value. So the my value as in where it is being queried and these are the neighbor outputs, the output of the output values of the neighbors. So how do I calculate what is the best part here, best weight, uh, sorry best PID gains for me for the query that I made. All right, all right. So now I have this new query, and the corresponding. So in step, so step three is computing this particular part based on the selected neighbors. Once the PID values of these um, uh, of this particular query is available, I am going to add this particular query because now I have the query as then input vector is available. And the output vector is also available because now I have calculated based on the neighbor. Next time there is a possibility that I am getting the same query. So then instead of doing all this um, step 1, step 2, step 3, I can directly get this particular information vector as the information vector entry into the database and the output vector can be figured out. Okay. So then I will have to keep populating the database entries with this help because I started with an initial database of certain say 20, 30 values, but I need to keep adding the new values to the, pay, to the database. So this step 4 does this for me. There is a new query, new values have been created, I will add into the database so that the next time I do not have to do this first 3 steps. But at the same time, if this query is very close to certain, certain um, uh, information vectors, then I should not consider uh, adding to the database. Okay. So I need to keep removing the redundant data here. So same, same data I should not keep adding, very close by values, close by information vector values should not be entered. So there should be a way to remove these redundant data so that my database is not growing exponentially with each sample value and, and to certain extent. Uh, we should be having distinct information vector entries into the database. Now how do I define that distinct? Who is distinct from the query? Who is from the existing information vector? There comes the method to find and that defines the step 5. So in the next video, we will look into one way of defining, describing these 5 steps and complete this loop, this understanding of the uh, PID um, parameter tuning using data driven way. Thank you.